All right. So there are our original functions. So what we were doing here ties into this definition. Okay. We're just going to word or use a little different notation for this. We say if capital F prime of X equals little f of X, okay, then that's going, um, taking the derivative that way. So we take the derivative of big F of X to get little f. So if we're given little f of x and we go backwards to find big F of x, that's doing the opposite of a derivative and it's called an antiderivative. Title of our section, tied it in. All right. So we say that big F of x is an antiderivative of little f of x. Okay, so derivative goes that way, and then if you have little f of x, you go backwards, anti-derivative, <laughs> to get big F of x. Okay, so derivative goes one way, anti-derivative goes the other way. Okay, so that's our big definition for this section. And then the theorem that accompanies that is we say that the most general antiderivative of the function little f of x is what we're doing up here in calculus jeopardy by adding those constants. We're actually covering a whole lot of different functions by doing that. Um, you know, the x cubed plus two, x cubed plus 85, x cubed minus 16 whatever constant on there. It keeps things very general by putting that plus C. So we say that the most general antiderivative of little f of x is big F of x plus C. Some constant on there. Okay, so if you're asked, like in this upcoming example here, to find the general antiderivative, that means we do actually need to include that plus C on there. So don't forget the constant on these. That keeps things nice and general, generic. Um, gives us the most all-encompassing form of our antiderivative. Okay, so yeah, that's the idea we've got here. Um, to do antiderivatives, it's basically a, a game of calculus jeopardy. You go back to the original function and then you tack this plus C constant on the end to keep things nice and general. Okay, so Moving into our example problem here, when it says find the general antiderivative, okay, this is like calculus jeopardy again. Okay, so whenever you see that type of thing, it's just <laughs> calculus jeopardy, but with a less fun name. All right, so when we are given these problems now, notice how the notation is a little different from our previous rounds. Um, in our first round of Calculus Jeopardy here, these were written as derivatives, okay, how it said f prime of x, so that we knew, okay, this is the derivative. We're going back to find the original. All right. In this second round here, we are not writing these with the derivative symbol now. We're just saying, okay, here's some function. Perhaps it is a derivative. What is it the derivative of? So we're going back to find big F of X. Um, what is the antiderivative sign for little f of X? Um, so yeah, yeah, Felipe in the chat there, good. Uh, it is big F of X. So yeah, capital F of X is going to be that antiderivative function. So like in the first round here, we went from derivative notation to not derivative notation. 
down here, we're going to go from little f of x to big F of x. Oh, what about the second antiderivative? Mm, yeah, so getting a little ahead of things there. We will get to that for sure, Felipe, um, but it's going to be a little later on in this section. So hold tight for the, the notation and the details about that. We're just doing first antiderivatives here. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, while I was uh, chatting at you guys there, Arshdeep has come through with our antiderivative for this first function. Very good. Um, so, we had little f of x was x squared minus 2x plus 1. And yeah, what Arshdeep's got in the chat there is big F of x, the antiderivative. So he's got one third x cubed minus, oops, x squared plus x. Because yeah, notice if you were to take the derivative of this, um, you would end up back at little f of x, okay? Now, there's one little thing that wasn't in the answer in the chat box there. It's this part right here. And um, we are doing the most general antiderivatives, so don't forget about your constant. We're going to just tack a plus c on the end of our Stieps answer there, and then we'll have our general antiderivative. Cool. Okay. So yeah, we're going in reverse there. All right. Let's uh, take a look at this next one. Um, and pause me if you do have any questions. But we've got little f of x here is square root of x plus 1 over the square root of x. That is not in the best form to look at right now. Uh, looking at those radicals is pretty tough, just like when we do our normal derivatives. For the antiderivatives here as well, it's going to be easier to put those as rational exponents. So we're just rewriting the function here, uh, x to the one half plus x to the negative one half. And looks like we've got an answer in the chat there for b, Felipe, f, big F of x, x to the three halves plus x to the one half. Well, let's check that out here. Yeah. Um, that is a really good starting point. There is a little change we're going to need to make, but I'm going to put down what you have so far. Okay, x to the 3 halves plus x to the 1 half. And so in doing that, um, Felipe, it looks like you're really working with the powers there, which is good. Um, to do normal derivatives, we would subtract 1 from the exponent on x. So to do an antiderivative, we do the opposite of that. We're not going to subtract, we add one. And so that is, it looks like what Felipe has done here. He's added one to both of the original exponents. So one half plus one gives us three halves. Negative one half plus one gives us positive one half. Cool. But let's just check this a little bit here, because you can always check your antiderivatives by taking the normal usual forward type of derivative. So just off to the side, let's check real quick. Big F prime of x for this function. We'd use our power rule and it looks like we're gonna get three halves x to the one half plus one half x to the negative one half. So while that was a, a really good starting point and the powers on x are correct, we do have these constants out front, these coefficients that were not part of the original problem. So yeah, yeah, it looks like Brandon, you've got our correction there, good. Um, so yeah, we do need to put a coefficient out front to counteract those um, kind of power rule type of coefficients. And Brandon's got the fix a two-thirds in front of the 3x squared. That way when we multiply doing our power rule, okay, <laughs> you would have two-thirds times that 3x squared that comes down. 
And so that would just make one X to the one half. So good, that's exactly how we fix that. And then on his second term, Brandon put a two out front to counteract that one half that's gonna come down when we do the power rule. So if there's a two out front here originally, it's gonna multiply that one half and give us a coefficient of one, which is what we would have had in the original problem. And Brandon's got his plus C on the end, so that is very good. All right, so yeah, we do need to um, first work with the powers, but then also be mindful of the, the coefficients that are going on there. Yeah. Okay, so that I think will also tie into our next function here. Um, f of x equals negative sine of pi times x. This one is a little trickier. Usually people don't like trig quite as well. Um, but let's see if we could at least get a starting point for this one. Because a lot of what we're going to be doing at the start here with these antiderivatives is just kind of making a guess and then checking it to see how we need to adjust things kind of like on B there. Um, Felipe gave us a really solid start and then Brandon gave us the adjustments that we needed to make. So yeah, let's see if we could do kind of a similar thing here. Where should we start for this? Yeah, Yasmin's got a good start for us. Good. Um, cosine pi x plus c. So cosine pi x Let's see. Solid. Um, so let's see if we need to make any adjustments on that. Spoiler alert, we will need to make a little adjustment, but that is a really good starting point. I'm going to write this one in blue. All right. So we've got our guess, and now we're going to take the derivative to see what adjustments we need to make. So the derivative of cosine pi x, we'll need a little bit of chain rule there, but the derivative of the outer portion, derivative of cosine is minus sine, so that's good, we like that. So minus sine and fill in the inside, that would be pi x, but then multiply times the derivative of that inside, so we would have this times pi that we didn't really want in the original function. Um, and then the plus c was good on there, yes, I mean we do want to include that, so sweet. And then yeah, Felipe just now got our correction on that um, to counteract this times pi that we didn't want to have. We can use 1 over pi on the original function. Okay. So that is effectively going to cancel out that multiplier of pi that we would have had before. So when we do that, now there's this big 1 over pi times our derivative. And so that would cancel out the pi that we get um, from the chain rule. So yeah, there's our adjustment, 1 over pi. All right. So good, seems like this is going pretty good so far. Um, we're getting to those solid starting points and then we're getting our little adjustments made. Okay, let's keep rolling with these. And um, so on this next one, we do have two things multiplied together. Here's a big thing to keep in mind. Um, the product rule we don't really have going in reverse. So you can't just do like antiderivative of one thing times the antiderivative of the other. Mm, uh -uh. Um, I'll just tell you straight out that doesn't fly. <laughs> um, so this one, we can rewrite this and that's going to help a whole heck of a lot because it'll get us into that nice um, kind of power rule in reverse form again. So we're just distributing, doing algebra here. So x to the negative 3 times x would be x to the negative 2, and then plus x to the negative 3. That's not our antiderivative. That's just rewriting the function. So from that, let's see if we can come up with our 
big f of x, or at least the starting point. So feel free to take a guess on that, and then we'll see if we need to adjust anything. We'll see who gets this one. I'll call this like the $400 question in the category of antiderivatives. <laughs> Not that I have $400 to give you, but still, <laughs> if we're playing Jeopardy, you get um, Owens bucks. <laughs> yeah. Any thoughts there? Yeah, we've got a a good guess and a little plus C on the end there from Yasmin. Cool. Um, so she has negative X to the negative one and then minus one half X to the negative two and a plus C. Good. Um, hopefully I read that correctly. I know it's hard to type these in, huh? Um, but yeah, let's see if she got it, because we can check this, no problem, by just taking the derivative. And so let's do f prime of x. All right. And yeah, power rule on this, bring down that negative 1 times this negative that's out front would give us positive x to the negative 2 power there. And then negative 2 times that negative 1 half would be again positive x to the negative 3 on that and then yeah the plus c derivative will just be 0 and so yeah very good Yasmin you got it with all the little adjustments in there right from the start so awesome yeah okay so that is our antiderivative right there no fixing necessary Cool. Ah, yeah, and then Felipe is moving on our next one here. So the original function here is little f of x equals x to the n power. And yeah, Felipe's got a good guess, but then our sheep's got the correction on that. So the guess here, oh, little whoops there. Um, yeah, the, the guess was originally 1 over n times x to the n plus 1 power. But in Arshdeep's answer there, he has um, 1 over n plus 1, x to the n plus 1 power plus c. So a couple little things there. But yeah, look how the power works out on that. We are keeping this function generic on purpose. And so just x to the n power, you start out by raising that power by one. That's what we've been doing in all of these power type of problems. So like negative two power went to negative one, negative three power went to negative two, et cetera. So we're spotting that pattern here, doing x to the n plus one power. And then the adjustment that you have to make for that is to multiply by 1 over n plus 1. Because when we do the derivative of this, 1 over n plus 1 is going to counteract the n plus 1 that comes down as part of the power rule. So x to the n. Um, yeah, so this is what it would look like when we do that power rule. And so 1 over n plus 1 times the n plus 1 just makes a coefficient of 1, which is what we were looking for. So yeah, that is a very good one to know. This is the general antiderivative of x to any power. Um, oh, one little note here, as long as n does not equal negative 1. Okay. Because if you add 1 to that, you'd get x to the 0 and um, you'd have a zero in the denominator down here, and that would not be good. Um, so <laughs> we actually don't learn what to do with n equals negative one this semester at all. Um, you will get that at the start of Calc 2 next semester. It's one of the 
one of the first things you do in Calc 2. <laughs> okay, so yeah, this is a good one to know well.